Welcome to Unpacking Culture. I am Alex Haynes. And I am Tiff Linnell. Hello, Tiff Linnell. How are you? Hello, Alex Haynes. I'm good. How are you? I am wonderful. Well, wonderful. Hallelujah. Sure. So um, if this is your first time tuning in, maybe you're not tuning in. Maybe you're listening on the podcast. Great. And thanks. But I'd rather you listen live. I mean, watch live and then li- li- Whatever. We're here every Wednesday at 10 p.m. It goes down Eastern time right here uh, on the Unpacking Culture page on Facebook. Uh, We're sponsored by Boss FM, the hashtag, a talk radio channel owned and operated by Boss FM Radio. Okay, this podcast or this show is available in podcast form uh, anywhere a podcast is available. Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Boss FM Podcasts, anywhere a podcast is available, you can can get this show. Uh, We are dedicated and serious and passionate about unpacking things in and about Black culture. And often I like to say that we're having conversations that you should be having with your damn family. Accurate. All right. So as we start there uh, in the last few weeks, and my, by the way, if you haven't listened to the podcast, I know people are just starting to get on it. And I actually prefer it that way. I don't, you know, if I put a product out there and you get the first one, but then there's nothing else, you just be like, oh, damn, he sucks. But you know, if you listen to a progression, uh, and you know, I mean, you, listen, you know, sometimes people li- listen one time and they be like, no, I've had a damn enough of right. that. And so. Uh, before we jump into the topic, I think it's important for me to, um, well, not, it's not important. I'll share this with you though. I share, I shared this. I just shared this on my, um, on Twitter, but I was talking to a friend about it earlier today. And I'm like, as somebody that has been doing this for a while, um, there's two things that you never want to not have. And that is stage fright or jitters before you begin something, whether mm-hmm. it's, I've been speaking publicly for a long time, probably, and I got my ass whooped for talking much longer than that. In school. But, yep. Um, yep. but if you don't get nervous right before you're about to do something, uh, that's, that's important. And also don't ever forget the feeling like people say don't despise humble beginnings, but I say don't forget humble beginnings. Mm-hmm. And so even for me, I shared this a couple of times uh, and with, with people and people that I know that make transitions in media. Uh, and if you live long enough, you do anything long enough, you will undoubtedly have some times that you have to transition and feel like you're starting over. And right. so pulling from my own experience, there has been, you know, I, I, there's a couple of times that I've had to restart. And I always hate the feeling at the beginning. Because you go through things and maybe maybe this is related to what we're talking about tonight. Maybe that's related to mental health. But you go through the does anybody care? Is anybody listening? Is anybody watching? The safe and first answers to those questions are no, no one's watching. No one cares. But that doesn't mean that you stop. You know, like it's true. No one is watching and no one really does care. Um, (laughs) That's a harsh truth. It is a harsh truth. And I used to lie to people and say, oh, people are watching you. Now, on the flip side of that, you know, there's always people watching that are critiquing you. In this day and age, people are watching you. They're screenshotting you. Right. And they're not even commenting. They're just screenshotting you, dropping you in their group chat and laughing at you. That's a depressing thought, but it's it's really but it's what very accurate. And it's and, and it's OK. Um, but I say that to say I was I was sharing with a friend of mine that. You know, I had a, a really, really successful show that I did for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then it ended. And, and, and you know, it, it's like even getting out of the routine. Like, I stopped talking so much because I did a lot of talking on that show. Right. And then I feel like I don't want to repeat myself because I done talked for four damn hours. <laughs> now, <laughs> you know, I'm back. I'm, it's like when you're at the beginning, you know, it's like, well, hey. There was a time where I could not stop getting feedback. Now I'm begging for it. And right. that beginning, you know, starting from the beginning is okay. So maybe that's for somebody that you've been on the fence about starting a project or you started a project and you feel like it's not picking up or you, you feel like, you know, there's, it's going nowhere. It's going somewhere. Just give it some time. Um, that was on my heart. So I decided okay. to share it. I'm glad. <laughs> Okay, so uh, tonight we're getting into a topic that I don't think people are as scared of as they used to be. 
And um, and I'll say that there was even and I, you know, I think transparency is key, right? So I think right. even me, me sharing my initial thoughts and 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 how I've transitioned and how my thoughts have evolved. Mm -hmm. Um aside from people that you you have a completely different experience, completely different thoughts, completely right. different experiences. Um and so And I guess I'll also be honest with sometimes I do feel like people and I, I'll, I'm always going to feel like that. I'll, I'll share that as, as part of this as well. But I think as we jump into the discussion of mental health and black mental health, when you say those words for you, what's the first thought that you have? Like when you when you just are, when you're talking mental health, is there a blanket thought that comes to you? For me, there is. Or do you think about multiple components? Um, I think about multiple components just because of my experience, but I will say in general, the first thought that comes to mind when I hear black mental health is oxymoron because hmm. I feel like it is just not something that is heavily discussed in our communities and in our families, um, because we don't discuss things heavily in our churches, in our communities, and in our families. Hmm. Um, so I think for a long time and for a lot of people still, that's probably an oxymoron. The two just do not coincide when you speak of Black and mental health. I'm feeling, you know what? And I think for the first time, I think you saying that that way just enlightened me into uh, to, to something, a, a part of the reason that I couldn't understand it before. So before we even talk about my first thought when I hear that word, um, my personal experience, because I talk so much and I talk about everything and mm -hmm. I overshare uh, and my oversharing has often prompted people to be comfortable oversharing with me. Mm -hmm. I have had the experience that, and I, I, I've always felt like for me, it's disarming when I tell you my truth. Or when I tell you, when I go deep with you, people have never boarded up and decided not to do that with me. And so mm -hmm. that, and that's, I'm, I'm realizing as we're talking, that's kind of crazy. I'm realizing right now is why sometimes I don't see where like people, you're not comfortable having these conversations because people have conversations with me. Now I right. understand that people don't have conversations with everybody. You need to be right. the people you need to be having conversations with. I know that people will share like I and you know this about me. I'm like a dumping ground. Like I could meet you last week right. and then somehow you just feel like you should just jump in my DMs and 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 unload your whole life. Right. And, I, and I'm like okay. And that's that's a that's a really weird place to be, but I, I and I think that kind of ties into mental health, right? People don't do it because they don't feel like they have safe spaces. And so right. they don't feel like their churches have been safe spaces. They don't feel like their families are safe spaces. Um, and I think in my personal experience, I've kind of gone, always gone against that. Things people don't want to talk about, I'm going to talk about it anyway. And then you're going to get mad. Okay, so I might stop right now, but I'm going to bring it back up because right. I have questions. You know, and I feel it's crazy because I was I was just talking to my cousins. I, I spent some time in St. Louis a couple of weeks ago and I ended up going to dinner with my cousins at 7 p.m. I was not done with them until 3 a.m. And I was like, wow. But we talked a lot, even, even about inside the family, how conversations don't happen that need to happen. And right. they, they were like, well, now that you know, we know you're going to say something. And I'm like, you're right. Cause I am yeah, and I'm gonna piss everybody off. But the first thing that comes to mind when I used when I used to hear it, not anymore. I'm a little, I'm a little seasoned. I used to just think crazy, not black please, mental please. health. When I hear the okay. word mental health, let's okay. take the black out of it. My first thought used, and this is me unlearned. This is unlearned me probably 18, 19, 20. Okay. You just crazy. And that's so I, Feel like a lot of people are just crazy. I'm like, okay, well, some you, people may be you crazy. I'm okay with it. I know, I now know that there's a there's there are distinguishing factors, and right. you, you know, you could be crazy and have mental health problems, and then that's a whole nother discussion. Right. But my default, and I and I I know what I do know is that I'm not alone in that being my assessment. Right. And so I think people have to evolve from that, but I. I think, and, and it's not just, you can't evolve without knowledge on a topic like this. 
You're right. not going to evolve. I feel like just like, you know, there's a spectrum of everything. There's a spectrum of mental health. You know, you and I strongly believe there's a spectrum of se sexuality. Mm -hmm. I, there's There are spectrums. Um, and so people... The, one of the main disservices, and I, I can't even remember who I was talking about yesterday. It was literally, and maybe it was today. I heard it today. But the the main problem, while and while we can't absorb this, and we're going to get into pe how people have absorbed it and how people haven't, and, and why people won't. But it's because, and we, this it, to me, this is first and foremost because of the spaces that we grow up in, and you just alluded to that churches, family. But when right. you grow up in spaces where you're taught one way, you're, it's wrong to think another way. Mm -hmm. And everybody, you know, we're living in a society where everyone, especially with people's grandmas that are only 37 years old, we're living in societies where people aren't really in those boxes anymore. You know, if your grandmother is 37 and your mom is like, never mind, you right. see my point. So it's not, it's not like it used to be for everyone, but there was a spectrum where I was like, well, I was taught this way. My mama taught me this. My auntie taught me this. My church taught me this. And so I never said anything because I have thoughts outside of that, um, that I felt like they wouldn't understand. And because, you know, they're, where they are on the spectrum is so limited, they probably wouldn't. Right. So, wow, we've already started with enough, but I think well, I'm yeah. with a lot, but I think, I think that we've got a lot to kind of jump into. Um, so let's, let's backtrack. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and start from uh, what we call the beginning. So I, I think that I want to start with a little bit of where the stigma comes from. And I'll, I'll be honest. I don't know that I could pinpoint like this this was the root cause of mental health being a stigma in our community um, or in America in general, because I'm going to back up even further and, and go take the black off again for just a moment. Mental health in America, our mental health systems, our mental health care, our mental, the value that we put on mental health is just not there. It doesn't exist. Therapy is not included in, um, in a lot of healthcare services or pro providing of services or costs. Nothing is included in American healthcare, but it, well, sure. that's a whole different, whole different topic, but um, it's only in certain plans. Is it even really considered a service um, and a healthcare service that, you know, can be required. Um, I just am getting on a plan within the last few years where it's included in my health care. I have oh so many visits per year um, that, you know, I can go and pay a copay and I'm fine and use my HSA card as a qualified medical expense to pay for whatever that copay is. So we're just now starting to see stuff like that. But if I am on, you know, some little basic health care plan, mental health is probably not included in that. Um, and if it is, it's not enough because our mental health providers in this country are expensive. Um, so, and I'll get into, you know, my own personal experiences a little later in the show, but it is just not something that is valued in this country from something as simple as work-life balance um, to actually going to have, you know, mental health disorders diagnosed or taking time off because you need mental health. Um, I'll get in a little bit into my experience for a second. I had to take FMLA from work a couple of years ago because, for mental health reasons. And it, I didn't get paid. They wouldn't approve me to get paid. So it was non-paid FMLA. I was off for a month because it was just that hard like they just don't really consider uh, mental health to be a reason for you to take FMLA. Now, so. can I offer something? And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer something. And, I, and not that I have the ultimate reason, but I think kind of going back to where my initial thinking is and where a lot of people's thinkings, thinking are. Um, and I'm like, oh, damn, damn it, damn. I'm going to say some shit that I don't need to say, but I'm oh, going to say Lord. it anyway. Um, okay. OK, so let's let's think about it this way. So like I just offered to you that unlearned Alex, 18, 19, 20. I'm like, OK, you say you got a mental health problem. OK, you crazy. You crazy. Something wrong with you. And that's 
No, it's fine. So something can be wrong with you. Now, we know that there's a lot of white people that are in control of these plans and right. from HR to finance to healthcare to medical to insurance, all of that. Right. These people don't think their kids are crazy and they shoot every damn thing up. Well. And they want to call mental health, you know, all of a sudden because they want to keep their damn gun. So which is it? Is your kid crazy or is it like... I don't I don't understand that. And so you want I, them to pick a side. I, I want them to pick a, a pick a pick a side because think about it. Like if, if if me, if unlearned me had continued and now I'm somebody, I'm a decision maker. I make a lot of decisions for a lot of people on a daily basis. Right. And I decide we don't want to cover that as a company because I think people like that are crazy. Mm. So you have people like that in control. And on the other side, if I don't think you're crazy, I think that you're an extremist and you're a liar. Right. But it can't just be that you actually just need to take time off. It can't for be. Your mental health. No, and, and, and until it's them. Until, until it's, it's them. them. And so I, I, do, I do understand where we come to the point where people don't understand things that they've never experienced. Right. So if right. you haven't had the experience, then you probably don't know and maybe you've had something close to it but right. for you it wasn't extreme as extreme right. now i do think that we are far reaching when we need our mental health like your insurance that's where i think insurance should step in because if we really believe and because a lot especially the, a company that's built on the backs of small businesses and things like that if you really think your employer has the ability to pay your you your salary for three months because you're having a mental health issue. Right. That's that's crazy too. You know, that's like to put that expectation on somebody that has 50 employees and they're like, okay, well, you're not doing nothing. Right. You How? can't do nothing. I you can't hire do nothing at all. Do now I need to hire somebody is. while you gone. Right. Right. And I gotta pay them Right. So money. I don't, you, and so I get that side of it too. So I think it becomes very complex, right. um, but I do not think it's something that should be shoved under, under the rug. And so, and I also don't think that anybody is, and this, here's my, here's my problem with it. Who's qualified to say whether or not you really have a mental health issue. Right. You're crazy or you're a liar. Apparently not my therapist, because I even had a note from my therapist, and they were like, nope. And that's telling. Because I was actually diagnosed with depression, and I still I still didn't get approved. That's telling. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, it's just not, it's just not valued in this country, really. Um, so, you know, I, I think we have to look at it from that side of things, but also look at it at why is it such a stigma in the black community and in our families? One that we don't talk about things and it's just swept under the rug. We, you and I have mentioned this. Every time I go home, I find out some new information about my family. One of the sides of my family. Every time I go home you know, or just mad at me because I do things like this and I talk about it on radios and videos and TV and then somebody shares it and then their coworkers rocking, watching it and they're like, oh, your family crazy, but your family fucking crazy too. Right. Like, well, yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. 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 All of that. Yes. So, you know, and even if it's not, you know, at home, there have been a couple of instances where I'm just having conversation with my mom and she'll drop something. And I'm like, What? What? Oh, you didn't know that? No. That was another little family secret or, you know, family thing that I just had no clue about. So, you know, I don't I, I can't pinpoint what the root cause of that is, but I, I'm willing to bet money that it, it's almost like a chicken or the egg. You know, did it become a stigma in the families first and then move inside of the church? Or was it vice versa? Because a lot of church people are like, literally, as long as I got King Jesus, I'm good. Okay, well, let me just pray about it. Oh, my prayers are with you. Oh, you know, you, it just sounds like you need to, you just need to pray. It sounds like you ain't praying, baby. How about you go talk to Can somebody? Can I say something to you about that? There's not enough of us saying that's a lie. 
There is not enough of us saying that. Is it's a not. It's a not because if it was, if if, if prayer could solve everything, a lot of things would be solved. Homelessness, right. school shootings, rats. You know, I'm sick of praying for, and I actually I don't pray after school shootings anymore. Yeah, you know, every once in a while I send up a prayer for the families of the victims, but their country doesn't give a damn about them. Yeah, at all. I'm so, gonna be honest. And, I can't know, remember just, the last time I posted prayers and thoughts and prayers to oh, whatever. Oh, I don't say that to anybody. Because why would you say that is. to somebody when their mama died? I don't... Thank you, but... <laughs> Moving yeah. along. Right. Get, getting back getting back to it. Because I just feel like, come on, like, don't... don't your, your thought and your prayer is not going to help me in, the, in my time of need. Right. If my child died because he got shot, if my mama died because she just did... You know, like, uh, I guess, you know, and there, you know, the, yes, it, there's a thing about being nice, but people are dealing with things at that moment. Right. So, and it's not me, to say what, prayers aren't endearing. It, for, for me personally, more, what's more endearing is you saying, I'm thinking about you, something like that, or I'm here if you need it. Sometimes people don't even need to talk, they just need you to come sit. Just, just sit. Just sit. I have been asked to just go and sit with people a few times. I don't need to talk. I don't need, I just need to sit. I had a friend that lost, lost uh, an aunt very, he has a huge family, an aunt very close to him. And, you know, he texts me like he lost her. Uh, He he knew it was coming. And even he was trying to, he was trying to deal with it Mm -hmm. during the day and I think he went the whole day. He just kept trying to deal with it, kept trying to deal with it, kept trying to deal with it. And when I called him, it was it was the moment I he's across the country. The moment right. I called him, and it, as he tried to speak, lost it. Right. What was valuable for him is me just sitting there and letting them lose it for sixty minutes. Right. Sometimes that's all people need. I don't need you to tell me your thoughts are with you are with me. I don't need you to tell me you're praying for me. I don't need to hear any. I I literally, I don't remember what was happening. I literally told my mom one time, uh, she was trying to give me, you know, some encouragement, bless her heart. And I just was not in the mood. I said, I don't want to hear all of your biblical BS right now. I don't want to hear it. Now is not the time. I am not in the space for it. I'm sure that was well received. There, what could she say? What could she say? Except, okay. Okay. I don't, I don't need that? to hear that right now. Don't. Don't. Don't try need me, to. Try me with that don't tomorrow. Moan. No, I don't, don't want to don't hear a to. scripture. Don't I don't want to hear a, a gospel song lyric. I don't want to hear none of that. Don't John P. Key, Kirk Franklin, Uncle Donnie. I don't want to hear none of that right now. I just need you to let me voice this, get it out yell, scream, cuss, whatever I need to do. I think that giving people the freedom even to just do that and not be so stuck on pray about it. My thoughts are with you. Talk to, you know, your pastor. Oh, we have ministers on staff for that. That is all fine and good. Sometimes you just need a good old friend with a glass of wine and a cookie. I'm going to come back to that because that's a problem in our community. Your minister is not a counselor or a licensed therapist or or psychologist. It's it's just not. Unless they are. Neither is your pastor, but they are. Unless they are. Most are not. 98% of them are not. Are ministers. They took a class for a certification or or for a license. They didn't even do that. Some of them didn't even do that. So yeah, that, there's that. Let's talk about dep- like, I think a lot of people feel depressed sometimes. They think they're depressed. They don't know that they are depressed. Right. What is the definition of depression? It it varies. It really varies for different people. Um, and it that's can, now that if, if that is true, if there's yeah. not a fine definition for it, I think that's another reason why people can't accept it. Yeah, it's almost, okay, so here, and this literally just came to me as we're talking about it. Depression to me right now is the same thing a migraine was 10, 20 years ago. 
it wasn't really a thing. It's starting to become a thing. But when I first started, and mom and I, my mom and I were just having this conversation, when I first started to get migraines in 2002, maybe? No, it was before that. It was 1990s. Migraines were not a thing. You weren't seeing commercials offering migraine medicine. It didn't exist. Everybody thought you were being dramatic. Thing. It was definitely a thing, but it wasn't a. It wasn't a. It was not a popular. Diagnosis. It was not a popular diagnosis, which meant if you went to a doctor and and described your symptoms, a good majority of them would say it was just a bad headache and you need to go take some aspirin or something. You're being dramatic. It can't be that bad. But it wasn't really a diagnosable thing. So, bless her heart. You know, I used. To, I told my mom recently. I said, you know, I used to tell you I had a headache, and you just really thought it was just a headache, but it was debilitating for me. That is somewhat like what depression can be for people. It's really hard to put into words. It's hard to define for some people because there's so many wide ranging differences in how different people handle or uh, deal with depression or how it manifests itself within different people. And Unless you are talking to a healthcare professional, it's not something that you can just easily say, oh, you're depressed. Like there are stages of it. There are different mannerisms of it. It affects different people. It can be physical. It can be emotional. It can be uh, all of the things, physiological. It can be, uh, you know, preferred pain. It just manifests itself in so many different ways. And there's so many different levels and stages of it. I personally, could, I'm sure there is some medical definition of it. I, it is, the medical definition is feelings of severe despondency or dejection. Not enough. That just doesn't, it doesn't do it justice. There are. I think um, what may, may do it justice is not the definition, but maybe the synonyms for it. Yes. Yes. It is. Oh, the synonyms. Being like melancholy, misery, sadness, unhappiness, sorrow, woe, gloom, gloominess, dejection, downheartedness, despondency, dispiritness, low spirits, heavy heartedness, discouragement, despair, desolation, dolefulness, moodiness, pessimism, hopelessness. There's more. Those alone, I feel like I got depressed just saying those words. But um, see, those are symptoms. Those synonyms are symptoms. And it's, as you were reading it, it almost sounded like a medi- med- medicine prescription or one of those drug commercials. Side effects can include list, only those are symptoms. And those are, that's just a very short list of what it can be. It is, and, and I'll get into to my own experience with depression. Um, I went into depression, w- well... Let me back up a little bit. Let me state my beliefs. I am a really big believer. Let me scoot this. I'm really comfortable tonight, in case you can't tell. I did yeah, not feel like... At the bottom of the screen, but I really didn't want to call you out. Yeah, but... I, that's why I just picked it up. But I just did not feel like being official tonight. Um, I've been dealing with the toddler all day, so no. Um but I'm a huge, huge believer, clearly, in case you can't tell, from uh, in um, seeing therapists and all of that. I saw my first therapist when one of my aunts went missing while I was in college. And I was like, I'm not going to make it through anything unless I sit and talk to somebody. And I literally, there was really no one I could talk to because everyone around me was going through it. She was missing. Um, so that was my first experience with a therapist. Um, and then I've just had different tragedies happen throughout my life that I was like, back to therapy, I go, um, my ultimate hit the wall, straw on the camel's back, whatever you want to call it was when my grandmother passed away. And then a month later, my uncle passed away. I was done. Those were two rocks in my life. Um, I wouldn't have made it through my childhood without those two people. So when both of them died literally a month apart, 
sent and I was in the middle of selling a house and I was going through stuff on my job at the time. It was a lot going on. Um, and I just was not going to make it. So to, to go from that, I missed one set. I started therapy. I missed one session. The night I missed my session, I had a nervous breakdown. And so from that moment on, it was almost like a, okay, maybe this is not necessarily something that you can be healed from. For me, some people can, some people can do six sessions and they're perfectly fine, but some people have a tendency to not deal with stress and anxiety well. And for those people, sometimes you need more than six sessions. Sometimes you need once a week. Sometimes you need twice a week. Sometimes you need every day. Sometimes you need twice, whatever. It just ranges. But it can be physical. I Sometimes you literally cannot find a reason to get out of bed in the morning. Why? I just, that makes sense. No, thank you. I'm actually good. Sometimes it feels like you literally have a weight sitting on you, like literally cannot physically move. Sometimes you just don't want to talk to anybody. You just shut everyone out, shut everyone. And it's not even, it's not even that you don't necessarily want to talk to anybody. It just almost feels like I wouldn't even know how to put it into words to talk to you. So it just isn't helpful um, for me or for you. I'd rather just sit here in silence. Um, gotcha. So it's, think, just, it's just a lot it's, of feelings. It's like, and another piece says that clinical depression is a whole body illness that affects your mood, thoughts, body, and behavior. Yep. And so without that treatment, those symptoms can last for months, weeks, months, years. And I think, those are the pieces that people realize because I, I think a lot of people and thanks so much for being vulnerable and sharing your experience. I think that a lot of people feel these things and they haven't had the language to call it depression because they already have a preconceived idea of what it is. So right. you saying that there are many, um, many definitions, many ways to kind of classify what it can be or what it feels like or what it looks like. It can look different in you. And right. I think one of the major things that I, that I think that we should share, I think is important for our listeners to understand. And it's something that we've really been intent on um, talking about is that depression is not weakness. Right. And so many times, like I, I, I want to leave that there just for a second. So people see and they understand that it's not like depression is not a weakness. It's not something, and people feel weak when they are depressed. That's what I've gathered. That's what I've understood. And, um, I, and you know, like I spent a, a certain part of my twenties as, um, as a young adult pastor. And, and this is, this is why I feel like I have the license. Well, look at me using Maya's words. Um, <laughs> The license to say that pastors get the hell out of the way when somebody comes to you and you're not qualified to deal with that. Right. I had people, the, 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 the place that I was a pastor at, there was a lot of people that just kind of just fell into my lap at the drop of a dime. And all of a sudden, because I have this title, I'm supposed to, like, and you know, one story I'm comfortable sharing because, you know, it turned out the guy ended up being all right, but I'll, I'll never forget that two days into me in this new role that just kind of came out of nowhere, I got a voicemail from a single dad. I've shared this with you before. Single dad, mm-hmm. three kids. His girlfriend left him. He called the church because he wanted to commit suicide. But did not want to leave his kids and needed somebody to talk to. And he left that on my voicemail. I was like, oh, well, um, First of all, I wouldn't even you I, and I tell people this and they don't they don't get it. You get it. When I was a pastor, I was the same person. Right. <laughs> so I might I might cuss you out. At this point, but I, what I did know, what I did know is that I can I don't can't call this man with the scripture. No. I, I can't call you with the scripture and say, "Brother, 
you know, all things work together for the, like, what? I just said I want to kill myself. I'm trying to end my life. And, and see, I, oh, I, think, I think it's comedy, so I can't call you and be a comedian. Right. That, that doesn't help. No. And so I think unqualified people in positions like that, um, they also have to be aware that there is help and there are ways to really, really help people work through this. And, and you, I think I need to say this, releasing people to say it's okay if you don't have the answer. Right. And I, I, and I say that in this space, I say it to Christians all the time. When somebody asks you a question about the Bible, I'm like, well, this don't make sense to me. And you'd be like, well, let me find my pastor can find you a scripture. Shut the hell up and just say, you don't know. Cause you don't know everything. Nobody knows everything. Who knows? I don't know. Right. I don't know. I don't know. And you can say, I don't know. And that's the safest thing to say to somebody that's dealing with something and you don't know what to do. Do not make yourself Dr. Phil. Don't, don't do that. Right. And it, it, that leads that oof, you just triggered me with that scripture you just said, because I literally was just having this conversation with someone earlier today. I have said this before. I will say it again. I will probably be saying this for the rest of my life. That famous statement, God won't put more on you than you can bear is not in the Bible. It doesn't exist. And when you think about it, it doesn't even make logical sense. Stop telling people that when their children have died, when their father has died, when their mother has died, when their spouses have died, when their family members get murdered, when their children are involved in school shootings. Stop saying that sentence. It's not a scripture. It doesn't exist. It's not real. It doesn't even make sense. If God didn't put more on us than we could bear, we wouldn't need him. Period. We just wouldn't. So I I believe. And some people don't have him. You're right. And, you know, I'm leaning towards. If we could just. I think that we as a people could get a lot more accomplished and would be better off if we would give each other and give ourselves more freedoms, freedom to love who we want to love during this great pride month and after and before Uh, freedom to worship how we want to worship, live how we want to live, be who we want to be. I saw a tweet earlier today that said my parents call me and tell me how much they hate that I wear dresses and who I'm becoming and who I am. But, you know, I just have to be proud of who I am. I was just like, you know, and then I saw another one that said, and I promise I'm coming back. I saw I hate that. this. I mean, this, but these things contribute to they contribute to mental health. mental health. They right. really do. I saw another one that said a mother went to a pride I think it was a pride parade and she went out and hugged all of the teens out there whose parents didn't accept them. I just thought that was such an incredible story. Actually, that's, I mean, we're seeing a lot of that going around. I I shared an article. It was shared just on my personal Facebook page, like a thousand times. There was a group of moms that went out to a pride parade that said, I will hug you if your mom won't. I think it's the same story, but and it was just a group of moms. I thought that yeah, was, the- I just think I'm not a mom, but I would have absolutely participated in that. Like, I just think I, there was like- a friend of mine. He said, thank you, white moms, but I need a hug from a, a, a black woman with big titties. Ah, uh, right. Cause people just can't take things seriously, but, right. and, and you, you know, but I, I think it's, I, I, I think, there's comfort in knowing the facts. And I think a lot of times people don't know the facts. So I'm going to put I'm going to put another statistic up. Okay. That shows um, approximately 18% of U.S. adults have a diagnosis, a diagnosable mental disorder in a given year. 18%. Mm. 18%. And that doesn't sound like a lot. It is. It is that is crazy. That but, doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually is a lot. And that's well, just what we know to diagnose you with. In addition to that, 4% of adults have a serious mental illness. Say that, say that again. I said approximately 4% of adults have a serious mental illness. 
Now, I don't have this as a fact, but I would just like to interject. 2% of those are white boys. And we just need, never mind. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I, I think that the statistics are important. Um, I also don't want people to hear 18% and say, well, that's not a lot. It, it is. And again, that's just diagnosable mental disorders. 18% of 7 billion people on earth. It's a lot. 18 to 18% of that, that's millions of people. So that's it's a lot. A lot. So I don't think I don't, I don't I'm not even concerned about people hearing it and saying that's not a lie. You could be one of those people and not know it. Right. So I think it's important for us, and important for you to know that if you're dealing with this, you're not alone. And that's really why I wanted to share that because there are people out there that are dealing. Yep. And or it that can, aren't. can be dealt with, or that aren't. And it can, it it absolutely can be dealt with. I thought it was interesting also because we, we talk about, you know, we talk about minorities. I care about black people, but minority groups overall have similar or in some cases fewer mental disorders than whites. That's statistically. Um, but minorities often bear a disproportionately high burden of disability resulting from mental disorders because they have they have less of them, but they suffer more because they don't ever get help. And see, I'm curious how that statistic comes about because we don't report our stuff. It is still happening in our communities where children have mental disabilities, handicaps, disorders, all the things, different ranges of things, and they just say, "Oh, low Ray Ray just bad." Oh, he just active. Oh, boys will be boys. Oh, mm. she just whatever, whatever. Oh, she just blah, blah, whatever. And it's never reported. It's not talked about. It's not discussed until the Ray Ray and, uh, you know, Trina or whatever commit suicide at 14. Um, or, you know, John wants to be Janetta when... He turns three and you just can't figure it out. Oh, that must be a demon. See, I don't have a problem no, it's with not. being Janetta because Janetta is a female. I have a problem with John wanting to be Janetta in 2019 because that right. is a name from 1940. I couldn't come up with any other names, but you get the point. I think that we oftentimes minimize symptoms in our community as a whole. And we talked about this. I don't remember if it was on the we show We do or because not. people think that people are crazy. Right. And if you had a crazy auntie or a crazy uncle your whole life. You just had a crazy auntie or a crazy uncle. Or she was life. bipolar. But she's crazy. Everybody knows she's crazy. Right. She's crazy. What you don't know is she just needs the right dosage of medicine and the right person to talk to. And she might be all right. Um, but because we don't talk about it and we, people are ashamed, literally ashamed or shamed into not going to seek help or don't know where to find help or it's not readily available or it's not readily acceptable to do so. If you are sometimes heavily involved in a church or involved in your family and your family doesn't believe in mental health issues. That's very true. And what I want people to get tonight, especially people, because people that are watching, that's, that's one thing, but those of you that are listening back to this, I want you to know it's really important that even though you don't think, and I think a lot of the research that, that our team has done is really, really good because you may think like, oh, my kid is fine. He just needs some more prayer because that's what you were taught. Right. That's what you were taught. Oh, my kid is fine. You, you know, and we all have those experiences where it's like, oh, I, I don't feel like I was ever believed. But there was a statement in our prep tonight that I just thought was imperative to, imperative to share. And I think I want, I want to say this three times because I want somebody listening. And when you hear this, I want you to think about your child. I want you to think about your wife. I want you to think about your spouse. I want you to think about your boyfriend, your girlfriend that something seems to be wrong with them and you can't figure out what it is. Right. Nothing in this world can torment you as much as your own thoughts. 
Nothing in this world can torment you as much as your own thoughts. And nothing in this world can torment, more, torment you as much as your own thoughts. I say that that way and I say that that many times because if you think about that, if you're somebody that doesn't deal with depression, you still know that your own thoughts do torment you. Now right. think about somebody that's being tormented by their own thoughts and they don't even know how to deal. Right. Th- think, right. think about that and, to, and, and then hopefully people will start dealing with it a little bit differently. One of our interns wanted to share her experience and I'm going to bring her um, and to chat with us for a little bit, uh, Biseta, welcome to Unpacking Culture. Hello, hello. Um, I wanted to share that um, I think a lot of times with mental health in the Black community, I think it has something to do with us trying to find our identities in society because of the fact that, as you guys can see, a lot of times we don't fit into any spectrum within society, especially the Black youth. Nowadays, you know, when you see them trying to compare themselves to other people with social media and all that stuff, that can get into their heads too. And it's depressing. It could get them into a depressive state because of the fact that they're not like everybody else. Like you can't identify yourself with someone else. That gets depressing even more. And I know that that's something that I've been going through for years is, Mm -hmm. you know, trying to find my place in society Um, especially in the black community for me too. Like that's been one of my biggest struggles. And, you know, we're talking about seeking help and medication, but when you're one of those people who you go through that stuff, you do take the medication, but you're also the way that you've grown up. It's not easy to talk to others about that, you know, about what you're going through because you kind of feel like no one understands. And, And when someone's sitting there saying that they understand that's not how that feels. Hmm. So you can sit here and tell me that you understand, but I'm one of those people where I struggle with, you know, when somebody's sitting there and telling me that they're under, that they understand in my head, I'm hearing, you know, I hear what you're saying, but I don't get it. Mm-hmm. You know, I hear what you're saying, but maybe there is something wrong with you. you I know, can and sympathize, but I can't another, empathize. That's another thing that gets into our heads too. It's like, okay, you know, is there something wrong with me because I feel this type of way? And, you know, the medication doesn't really do anything for you. Most of the time, the medication, all it does is it calms you down for like two seconds or it makes you sleepy, right. you know, and you can't function, you know, and you're trying to find other ways to get yourself out of the depressive state. Like what I do is the gym Um, And after the gym, I'll go to the park before I even associate with anyone. But sometimes that doesn't even work. And Mm -hmm. it takes months and months and months to pull yourself out of that funk. You know, know, I I think it's so important for us to hear these stories because and and I've been open open and honest about this because I'm somebody that really hasn't dealt with with depression a lot at all. And I, I don't. But. Two things, and I'm a, I'm a problem solver by by nature. So I think a lot of this, a lot of the stuff that happens ha- starts when kids are young, young, young. And mm-hmm. I don't know, like you know, there are all these programs to end bullying, and I, I don't know that bullying ever ends because kids are cruel. You know, I think middle schoolers are the worst people on the planet because I was actually. They are, I was- Brutally bullied in middle school. Yeah, a middle so, school yeah, is that forward. time that you're all of them are ugly. You know, so you start off ugly, sixth through eighth grade. You're all look. You look funny. Your teeth are too big. Your forehead's too big. Your nose is too big. Your lips are too big. Unless you're white, you don't have no lips. Um, your ears are too big. Like there's all these things that happen to you in middle school, and everybody's like, you know. And then some people grow out of it faster. Everybody, everybody feels it in middle school. Mm-hmm. So I think it's hard to, to cu- curb that. But we, what we don't do, and, and Tiff, you know, I'm really passionate about this. Adults don't have training. No one trains you how to be. If childhood was training for adults, we would have much better adults. But what right. somebody should really tell adults by the time they're 17 or 18 or started at 16, 17, 18, when people are coming into their individual selves, it is okay to be you. And the reason yep. that no one's saying that is because traditions they're stuck in what their family taught or you need to look like the rest of us oh that's not what we do in this family but bitch i'm in this family now so that's what we do now you know and no kids don't have the boldness to say that 
And so we as adults have to take that back if we want to curb this and start affirming people. It is okay. Like you are, there is no fitting in to your blackness. If you black and you do what you do, that's what black people do. That's how I like to look at it. And that's just, it, it is, it is what it is. You and, and if when we choose not to be affirming in that way, then we see what we 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 see these things spiral out of control, and it it frustrates me. Now it does piss me off because I don't like to see people people bullied. I don't like to see people feel like they are less than, not good enough, and that understand. I know that a lot of people deal with that, and it's a very frustrating thing. So to hear you kind of share that perspective, I think it's really important for us to also think about once you've been able to acknowledge even people that are deal with it, we have to make it our due diligence to free people to be right. themselves. And that is, sure, we're celebrating Pride Month everywhere all over the world. People are pissed off about it, but you know what? You should still be free. If you piss off about it, that you, you're probably, you probably hate yourself. You know, and I say that to people, I know I don't hate that. I'm just like, God, I hate the sin. If I don't hate the sin, no, you hate you. You hate you. Let's correct that. I don't, I don't. People don't go on record saying that enough. The fuck? Forget that. <laughs> you meant that you, know, you at the end, at the, at the end of the day, we as humans and 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 we as a community have to be and and that what well, that's what this show is about. When we unpack it and we talk about this is what people are dealing with. This is the facts. Everybody could be dealing with it in some form and you may not know what it looks like, but we have the, we do have the ability to free each other. We really do. We do. We, and like, ourselves when really, nobody else will do you, it. When you allow people to be, allow people to be themselves in your space, you will find that people are, will always be free around you. Right. And so I said at the beginning, uh, and I said it like it was a burden at the beginning of the show that I'm like a dumping ground, but I already know I don't have a problem with that when I'm being honest with myself, because anybody will tell you, and my friends tell me that I do it too damn much. I open my house to anybody. I let, I, I just, I am that person. So people are free to be themselves around me. And I say sometimes too free jokingly, but there's no such thing as too free because you are you. Right. And, and, and yeah, sorry. Well, you call it a dumping ground. I like to think of it as I, I, I am someone else's cup. People pour into me so that I can pour into others, or I've learned how to pour into myself via, you know, as Beseda said, going to the gym or listening to music or walking around my house singing Hamilton or dancing or you know, having a creative moment and writing something, directing something, whatever, I find my avenues. But I am frequently like you, that person that people call at 1 a.m. Now, I may not answer. It's a very limited number of people who can get through at 1 a.m. But, um, you know, people know if it's serious, call me. They, they know how to get through to me. And they know that I will sit and listen no matter what time it is. Um, and we can have that conversation. Or if you just need to sit, I've gotten phone calls in the middle of the night where they didn't even want to talk. I just need you to sit. And I know it's 2 a.m., but I'm just, I need, I just need this. Okay. I just sit. Hey, can you just sit on the phone with me until I can fall asleep? I sure can. Whatever it is. Or I've had people come to me and say, because I am so open and vulnerable about my experience with mental health and depression, being medicated, not being medicated, seeing therapy, and all of that, or just my spiritual experience of mm -hmm. me, this is a whole different show, but me saying, screw the Bible and ain't nothing but a bunch of stories to falling back in love with it and God and forming that relationship. I've been so open about both of those sides of myself People come and ask questions. They want answers. They want to know how. They want to know what. They want to know where, blah, blah, whatever. So I consider myself a cup. I have to be refilled so that I can either fill someone else up or so that they can just pour their water into me, whether that be good or bad. Sometimes it's bad and I need to get rid of it for them. Sometimes it's good and it refills me for the next person that needs to, you know, spill whatever they need to into me. Sure. So. That's how I, I like to look at it. No, that's very dope. And I think, like, 
if you, uh, whenever we do stuff like this, I would say, if it's not us that you can talk to, if it's not me, if it's not you, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline is always, ha they always have counselors available to talk to you. And everybody does not want to commit suicide. You know, let's, right. let's, let's be clear there. It's, it's just, everyone doesn't want to do that. But this number is always available. I've, I've given this on shows for years at a time. 1-800-273-8255. The fact that I know it by heart. Um, it's sad. I don't think it's sad, but I've done so many shows that I've repeated. <laughs> I'm saying that is sad mm -hmm. that we have to do that many shows about the topic. Well, you know, there's repeated. also a song called 1-800-273-8255. Well, by Logic. Again, it's sad that that song even had to be made. Agree. But I you're agree. right. Not everyone wants to commit suicide. If you need or want a, a licensed therapist in your area, there are many, 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 many resources available to you. There are apps now where you can talk to someone. I cannot think of the name of them off the top of my head. Those kind of freak me out. But I, I think that I do believe that they're needed. But I think that they're needed because not everyone feels comfortable enough or has that friend like us in their circle that they feel they can talk to or, you know, whatever. So I think it's needed, you know, download one of those apps. I mean, I'm pretty sure it is needed because, you know, you people tell people that you just met you just swiped right and then you just told them that your whole life so i don't see how that's any different but wow <laughs> download one of those apps that's, that's what people do that's that's what that's what the people do um like, download one of the apps the there's talk space I had swipe right i had swipe right and then oh you know, my god so you're cute, still going had, i'm, I'm trying like, to be serious and offer resources and then, you know we talked we text all night i think i love her what <sighs> What? How? What? Anyway, I think. Listen, download it, one of the apps. Download Calm. Calm is one of those that it can help you just sit, breathe, meditate. It'll count for you. If you have an Apple Watch, I don't know what other watches do it. I have an Apple Watch. But there literally is a breathe app on your watch. Tap that. You, to, you act like we're talking to a lot of rich people. We're not doing that. You don't have to be rich to have. I'm not rich. You don't have to be rich to have an Apple Watch or any kind of. I have an Apple Watch. All right. Well, anyway, there are <laughs> other resources. Um, if you just can't find anybody else, tweet me. I'm not saying that I will um, see it immediately. So if you need immediate help, don't tweet her. Don't. don't I don't even me. do that. That is not a good idea. No. No. I respond to my tweets. You are not there. You're, you're not going to be at their every beck and call. Bad well, no, I'm idea. I'm not doing that. I'm yeah, not doing so that. Why? No, no. But if you, need, a, you, if you want a recommendation for some resources. Pull that back. Yes. If you want a recommendation for some resources, then tweet her. That's what I was trying to say. But that's not. No, you said if you need someone to talk to, tweet. No. No. I'm, I'm not adding you to right my now. list of people. No, I'm not doing that. But I will yeah. help you with a resource or two. Very good. Okay. Um, we are out of time, but this uh, conversation continues and we'll continue to post resources and information on our Facebook page. We'll put it out there because it's really important um, that we have these, these these conversations, not just in our community, but, but with each other. It's vital that we keep this conversation going and that we don't let uh, people suffer alone. So there's two things that you can do for me. Stop letting people suffer and stop being the cause of people suffering. Some yeah. of you are bigots. Well, this is a whole nother show. Let me pull myself back. You stop letting people suffer around you and free people. Allow them to be themselves around you. Tiff, how do people keep in touch with you? You keep in touch with me at Tiff Linnell everywhere dot com, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and I just launched my new Tiff Linnell site, so check that out. Is that it? You done? I'm done. Because you said a lot. <laughs> I did not. You get on my nerves. All right. I, I mean, I just anyway. Um, I'm just everywhere. About letting people be free, and then here you go trying to constrain me into a box. No, I actually love the fact that you just launched a new site and all that stuff. I think that's really good. I'm at least unmuted everywhere. I'm just out of time. So I was just, I wasn't trying to rush you. Mm -hmm. 
I love everything about you. Otherwise, anyway, uh-huh. I'm Alex. I'm muted everywhere, and uh, we are out of this B. Okay, we are back next Wednesday. This podcast is up tomorrow, and uh, this picture is about to move me the hell on out the way. Well, I'm 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 gonna go. We out. Bye. Wow. Bye. <laughs>